Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Basically, It's Biblical. Greetings and Shabbat Shalom. Yes, it is indeed a uh, Sabbath, which started at the beginning of um, sundown, starting with sundown, I should say. And uh, I want to just remind you that uh, the reason that um, today is uh, the Sabbath is only because of the adjustment that is made between the Gregorian calendar and the lunar solar calendar. Since we don't traditionally, particularly in the United States, um, function by the lunar solar calendar, which would have made uh, Friday evening uh, and then Saturday the Sabbath. Right, So that every Sabbath would be the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th. But because we are using a Gregorian calendar, we would have to adjust the days uh, to fall with the new moon. And that, that adjustment causes us to have the evening of Saturday, today, and the 8th or excuse me, the 15th, tomorrow, uh, as the Sabbath. So beginning from sundown, right, to sundown. So that is why I say uh, Shabbat Shalom, as in peace of the Sabbath. So that is why we're doing the Sabbath, and that is the whole reason. You could have started, if you were using the the lunar solar, solar calendar, you could have had your Sabbath on Friday. (laughs) <laughs> and it, uh, Friday going into uh, Saturday, right? But as I said, because we don't traditionally work with just the days, as in one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the Sabbath, as it was in the Bible. Because remember, Jesus, the Lord, uh, God, the Almighty, did not uh, give names to the days. He simply numbered the days. Uh, so if you go back uh, in in uh, Exodus and Leviticus and so forth, you'll see, right, that, that Nisan was the first month, and then um, that is what set the month, so that's why May now is the second month, or the second lunation, again, if you're using the lunar solar calendar. But because we are using a Gregorian calendar, uh, we're in May, and we start it on the eve of the 14th going into the 15th and therefore uh, that is uh, today which gives us the Sabbath um, from sundown to sundown. Alright then, Uh, so you know that um, the assignment was given to you to uh, read Matthew 13 with regards to some of the issues uh, that we're going to discuss today around the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Um, and then I gave you some other scriptures as well, so we're going to do that. Um, but first, as always, as I try to remember, as I didn't do the other day, because uh, it was so early in the morning and I you know, had to get that message to you, um, now let us begin first and foremost with a prayer. Amen. Oh, Lord, our God, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence, to be in your presence on purpose, to be in your presence with an established mind, a made up mind to study your word and to hear what you have to say, guiding us with the Holy Spirit. We welcome you, oh, Lord. We beg you to come in and be with us and anoint us with your power through our brother right through our our king our lord your son our savior jesus the christ that we have been in adopted into your family and we want to learn more of you and your ways we want to be good citizens of your kingdom so teach us your ways O lord help us to number our days and be mindful of the signs in the heavens that you laid out for us, that give you glory. Help us, O Lord, to remember your will in everything that we do. Help us to commit all we do unto you. 
to glorify your name. And then, Father God, we know that there are so many people who are dealing with so much distress, so much depression, so much uh, deceit, so much discouragement. Lord, so much disease. And, Father, we know that you are still in control. We know that you have given us power through the Holy Spirit to preach, teach, and to heal. Help us, Father, to give testimony to all of those that we meet and greet, that you have been a healer, that you have answered our needs, that you will not lie and will not go back on your promises. Help us to instill hope and joy and faith in the hearts and minds of others. Help us to witness to your manifest power and your glory. And Lord God, help us to heal those that we meet through word and through deed. Help us to be mindful to help one another and to address the needs of our brothers and even our enemies. Lord, I ask that you would heal anyone in the sound of my voice, anyone participating in this Bible study, and anyone that they share it with, O oh Lord. And anyone, Lord God, that that is in distress right now. Father, we know there are many people who are dealing with war, active war, with dealing with active oppression, dealing with active persecution for the sake of your kingdom. Help them, O oh Lord. We pray. Provide, Father, for those who may be dealing with a distraught sickness right now, who may be nearing their death. Help them to seek your face if they haven't already. Help them, O Lord, to reach out to you before they die. Lord God, before the spirit of life leaves them. Lord, we ask that in the name of Jesus that you would heal any person who is listening right now. Any person who hears your word and has read your word, help them to obtain the health and revival in their bodies, in their soul, and in their mind through your word and through your promises. We ask all of this through and in the power and the authority of the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and Amen. And so on that note, you know, on that note of asking in the name of Jesus, what do we mean when we say in the name of Jesus? Well, it directly relates to being in the kingdom, right? First of all, let's just make clear that we're talking about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God to where he is in total authority and control and total it's his government, right? It's his territory. He alone is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're talking about that end time kingdom, not this present earthly realm, right? Because we know that in this present earthly realm, we know that Satan and his demons have a certain amount of control. We know that it's only a certain amount of control because we've seen it We've seen it worked out with Job, right? He only had a certain amount of control. We know that it's only a certain amount of control because we know that Jesus, when he was tempted three times in the wilderness, Satan could not uh, conquer him. So it's only a certain amount of control. We know that because Jesus successfully shed his blood and sacrificed himself for us, that he conquered sin and death. And so, therefore, we know that the devil only has, Satan only has a certain amount of control in this present earthly realm. So, we want to distinguish, right, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, which are the same. It's his kingdom, right? If we know that heaven is his kingdom, and there has and, and, and kingdom implies there is a king, and he is the king of heaven, then it is his kingdom, amen. The kingdom of heaven is also the kingdom of God, because he is the God of heaven. Amen. There's no other. No other God before him, right? No other God beside him. No other God to take the place of, instead of, or around him. 
He is the only one and true, only, true God. And his son, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the only true and risen and living God. You, and, you know, we need to think about this. When, when the Lord gave uh, kings to the Israelites, remember, they, remember the, the Hebrews, they asked for a king. They wanted an earthly king. And he said, okay, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i give you an earthly king. He, he desired to be our king. His plan was that he would be our king. And we would be his people. And he wanted to dwell with us. And we would dwell with him. And the first thing the people said was, Oh Lord, you know, his voice is too loud, so don't we don't want to hear him. Right? And then, oh, you know, his face was too shining bright when they saw Moses, so we don't want to see him. And then later they got to the point where they didn't want a king. They didn't want him as king. They wanted an earthly king. One that they could see, right? One they could talk to, one they could, you know, see in, in, in the presence of them. And so he said, Okay, I'll give you a king. And he and you know remember God's plan is never going to return void. What he has set out to do is always going to come to pass. He set out to have a people that would love him and that he could love, that would be in his kingdom, that he could be their king, and that's the way it was going to be. Now he relented for a time and allowed them to have an earthly king only for the purpose of demonstrating to them that every king that he gave them, every king that he has set up, even to this present day, every king and ruler and president and you know minister of this or that or the other is a, is, a, is a king that God set up because he sets up kings and he sets down kings. He gave to show you and show them continually that there no earthly king no human king could ever be as good as he is so he said okay you know what you insist on having this in your way so i'm gonna i'm gonna give it to you so just so you can see because ultimately in the end right you've read the book right in the end revelation 20 21 to 22 says it will be his kingdom and his kingdom will reign forever and ever and we will be his people and he will be our king and he will dwell with us and we will dwell with him so he's not gone back on his promise he's not gone back on his word his word didn't fail he's only allowing you to to have what you say you wanted just to show you that is not as good as him. There's one way of looking at it, right? He and, and, and as I've said many times, it's about it's this marriage. That's why he sent his son, and, you know. And that relates back to the if you look uh, look in the um, you know the whole outline and practice of the the Israel or the um, the Hebrew or Jewish wedding, the whole process, right? You see. That and we've talked about that before, but it's a way of bringing us back in relationship with him. So if a king, so if you are inheriting the kingdom, right? Um, if if someone if someone leaves you a will, and uh, you're going to inherit something that they've left for you, well, in order for the will to take effect, that person has to die, right? Well, God is a spirit, so he couldn't. A sp- his spirit is not ever going to die. Right, he he is the great I am, the the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. So he's not going anywhere. He wasn't going to die, but to fulfill the lawful inheritance requirement, he came down through Jesus the Christ to be born in the flesh, so that when he died, Amen, we could inherit the kingdom by will and law. Because there had to be a death, and in order to clear clear us of all our uh, judgment because of our sins, there had to be a purpose, a, a lamb that was blemish free, that was perfect, and it had to be set aside and on purpose for his for his. Bring